Hey everyone, Sean Watasa here back with another video. And in today's video, what we're gonna be doing is deploying our very own ERC-721 smart contracts. This video is gonna cover a lot of things and an overview of what we're gonna be covering. We'll first go over what is the ERC-721 standard? How is it different from your other standards like ERC-20 and ERC-1155? Then we'll jump into ThirdWeb and we'll show you how to deploy your very own ERC-721 smart contracts. We'll go through some of the different ERC-721 smart contracts that you can deploy easily using ThirdWeb and what some of the different use cases for those smart contracts can be and why you would choose one over another. And that is, again, a quick overview of what we're going to be going over in this video. But to start off, let's first cover what is the ERC-721 standard and how is it different from your other standards like ERC-20. So an ERC-721 is a non-fungible token or an NFT. Now you may have heard of an NFT before, you might be familiar with it. They are normally referenced and referred to when people talk about digital collectibles. You might know it as like those avatar or profile pictures of different animals or different you know styles of art. And that is what an ERC-721 token is. They are non-fungible tokens. That is what NFTs stand for. But what does non-fungible mean? Let's you know break that down a bit first. So non-fungible means that each token is unique. It can't be exchanged one-to-one -one because one token uh, differs in value to another token. Unlike an ERC-20 where all the tokens that you create are all the same. They have the same value, same attributes. Uh, ERC-721, each of the tokens created are unique in their own way. You can think of this as like maybe you have a piece of art. If you have a painting, it's not the same as other paintings. Each piece is unique. It has its own value. Therefore, it is non-fungible. Now, let's cover some maybe use cases of ERC-721 tokens or NFTs. Uh, a popular use case, and you might hear people mention this a lot when they talk about NFTs, but digital collectibles. Imagine you have a platform where you can sell, buy, and trade these unique digital assets. Uh, you can think of these like maybe um, digital art, virtual pets, rare items and games. Uh, all these different things can be represented by an ERC-721 token. And this ensures that every item is distinct and can be owned and traded individually. The non-fungibility of these tokens make each digital asset unique and valuable. There can be rarity to these as well. And depending on the attributes that you provide these digital assets, that can change the value of what they are worth to one another. So now that we have a little better understanding of what an ERC-721 token is, let's jump on the computer here and let's deploy and go over some of the different ERC-721 smart contracts ThirdWeb has to offer. All right, so on my computer here, I am on thirdweb.com. I've connected my wallet and I am now on the, the ThirdWeb dashboard. From here, we have our different tabs here and we're gonna head on over to the contracts tab. And here on the contracts tab, you can see a list of all the contracts you've deployed using ThirdWeb. And up in the top right, you'll see a blue deploy contract button. So we'll click on that. And this is the list or our explore page of all of the different pre-built contracts that you can deploy through ThirdWeb. Now we have these pre-built contracts. They're easy to deploy. All you need to do is fill out a few pieces of information for the contract parameters. And you can click a button and deploy the smart contract. Now, again, we're gonna be covering ERC-721 smart contracts. There are a few of them here, and most of them are gonna be under this NFTs tab. If you remember earlier, uh, ERC-721 is a non-fungible token or an NFT. And we're gonna just hit view all in this NFT section here to look at the NFT contracts that we can deploy. Now you're gonna see some ERC-721 smart contracts along with ERC-1155 smart contracts. And we'll cover ERC-1155 in a different video, uh, but this one we're just gonna be covering the ERC-721 smart contracts. Now we do have a few of them. The three that we're gonna be going over is these top three right over here. We're gonna go over the NFT collection, which is your standard ERC-721 smart contract. We're gonna be going over the NFT drop contract. This is going to be a contract that maybe you're more familiar with, but it's an ERC-721 smart contract with the ability for other people to claim ERC-721 NFTs from the contract. So this is like your traditional NFT drop. Maybe if you're familiar with like those PFPs or avatars uh, and you wanna charge someone for claiming an NFT, 
you'll use the NFT drop. And we'll go over what the drop functionality and claim condition functionality is in a bit. And then we have the open edition ERC-721. So we'll go through all of these different ones in depth as we start to deploy them. But we'll start off here with the NFT collection. So if I click on this, you can see this is an ERC-721 smart contract. You can see some of the use cases and examples of why you might want to use this smart contract. You can create a one of many collection for maybe like your photography or your artwork. Uh, you can create a one of one NFT collection. Uh, maybe you want to mint your artwork as NFT, sell them on a marketplace. Um, these are going to be for you to create these, again, unique NFTs. And the difference is only you as the deployer and owner of this smart contract are going to be able to create these NFTs for the smart contract. If you look at the NFT drop, which will deploy next, you'll be able to allow other people to claim and mint these NFTs. Uh, but the NFT collection here, this is only strictly for if you, the owner, wants to be able to have the sole permission to uh, mint and create these NFTs. So what we'll do is hit the deploy now in the top right. You'll see you can fill out your contract parameters here from the name, uh, we'll just call this our NFT collection uh, symbol. Uh, we'll just call this NFT. You can add a contract image, a description, now you can also set the royalties and primary sales. So royalties, this is for if you sell your NFT on a secondary market. This is the wallet address that the royalties are going to go to. And you can set to the percentage of royalties here. So if the marketplace that you're selling supports royalties, this is what it's going to be taking. And that's where it's going to be sending the royalties to. You have primary sales. So this is going to be the initial sales of NFTs. This is the wallet address that it gets sent to. Now down here at the bottom, you'll see network and chains where you can select the dropdown and you can select any EVM compatible blockchain. Uh, you can select mainnet, testnet. So you can just put search the network name or put the chain ID in here. And you can again deploy the smart contract to any EVM compatible blockchain out there. So we make it super easy uh, for you to deploy your very own NFT or ERC-721 smart contracts. Now I have some Sepolia ETH here, so I'm just going to click on Sepolia. And I highly suggest that you deploy your smart contracts to a testnet first, try it out, get some testnet funds and, you know, test out deploying these smart contracts before you go to mainnet. But once you have everything filled out here, go ahead and hit deploy now. You'll get a pop up here. This is going to uh, give you the transaction here to deploy your smart contract. So you're just going to have to pay for the gas. I'm going to hit confirm. Then we'll get a, another pop up here. This is going to be a signature request for adding your contract to your third web dashboard. Now our dashboard gives you a really user friendly UI to manage and uh, execute and interact with your smart contracts. So you're just going to sign that right over there. And once that is successfully deployed, you'll be brought to your contract dashboard. You'll see here the name of your contract. Uh, the chain that you deployed it to, uh, your contract address here, you can copy that. Um, you have a contract checklist, so you can see we already deployed our contract. The next thing to do is to mint our own NFTs, uh, which we'll go over in just a bit. Uh, but we'll first go over some of the other navigations here on the left. So this is your overview page. This gives you a very general overview of your smart contract from the analytics, the latest events and everything. Uh, you can look at code snippets. So if you're looking to build or interact with the smart contract through our SDK, uh, we have TypeScript, um, React. You can use this in Unity, uh, React Native. You'll have all the code snippets and everything here to kind of get you started. So you can see if we want to transfer an NFT, this is the code snippet here. You can copy that. You can start building out your front end applications for interacting with your smart contract. Uh, below that, we have the Explorer tab. This is where you can actually interact with your smart contract. You can view all of the write and read functions. Uh, you can execute these write functions here. You can think of it as a like how you interact with your smart contract through something like a block explorer. You can again, you can mint, you can do and execute any of those functions from the smart contract directly right here in your dashboard. Below that you have uh, events. So all the events that get emitted to the blockchain through the smart contract will be viewable here. You have analytics as well, so you can view things like unique wallets, total transactions, um, and you can view the analytics of your smart contract. Uh, we have payments here. So this is if you want to enable credit card checkout, you can enable that here. We have your settings. So if you want to add or change the contract metadata, you can change that here. 
Uh, when you update it, just know that you have to pay for gas again. So if you want to set it up again beforehand, like when we deploy the smart contract, you can do it there. If not, you'll just have to configure it right here in your settings. We have your sources tab. This is going to give you all of the Solidity code here that is used to create this smart contract. So you can you know, open it up and view all of the Solidity code here if you want. And then if we drop down here into the bottom, we have our NFTs tab. And this is where we can start creating our NFTs for our collection. So right over here, I can mint an NFT. Uh, I can now create the NFT that I want uh, by providing it a name, the media. This is, can be an image, uh, MP3, MP4. You can, uh, I think there's a yeah list of different uh, media types that you can put in here, a 3D model, PDF, HTML, whatever you want the NFT to be. So how an NFT or an ERC-721 works is attached to the token is a reference to a piece of metadata. And that metadata is gonna include things um, like the name, uh, the reference to the image or the media file, it's gonna have a description, you can add attributes to it. And that is what connects the attributes and the description of the NFT to the token. It's this piece of metadata here. So a lot of people think that the ERC-721 or an NFT is like a picture. Uh, and that's the common misconception that Majority of the world, I think, or majority of people who kind of got their first taste of NFTs as, you know, these pictures of monkeys that were selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, that isn't technically um, the NFT itself. The NFT is the token that is minted and created on the blockchain. The image and the media is just what the, that token is referencing to. And that's just the visual aspect that people can see um, when they are interacting and when they see an NFT. So again, you can create the, your own NFTs here. You can just add a name. So I'll just say, we can upload a file. So let me just, uh, I'll just take like our little blob friend here. You can add a description, uh, you can add properties and traits, and then you can mint the NFT. And what this is going to do, it's going to create this NFT. It's going to create that ERC-721 token. It's going to create the metadata and link that token to this piece of metadata here. We'll confirm that to mint it. And this NFT will then be minted to my own personal wallet. From here, I can you know, list the NFT for sale on a marketplace, maybe OpenSea, Rarible. Uh, and then I can put a price onto it and people can then, you know, purchase this NFT on those marketplaces. Or if you want, you we actually have marketplace contracts and you can deploy your own and build your own marketplace to sell your own NFTs. So there you go. You can see now we have our NFT. We have the token ID, uh, which starts at an index of zero and goes up from there. You have your media, which is our image of our blob friend here, the name that I gave it. Uh, and then the owner. So the owner is my wallet address that deployed the smart contract because I'm the creator of the NFT. And again, from there, we now have an NFT that we can list um, on different marketplaces and we can use it however we want to. Down here at the bottom, uh, below the NFTs tab, there's the permissions tab. This is where we can give permission to other wallets to be able to create NFTs. So maybe I have a team of artists or a team of people who want to create NFTs for this smart contract. Right now, by default, it's the wallet address that deploys the smart contract but I can add other wallet addresses to here if I want to. So um, I can also remove all the wallet addresses completely. And now no one has the ability to add or create new NFTs on a contract. So maybe I want to create a collection of 100 unique tokens. And once those 100 unique tokens are created, I want to remove permission so no one else can ever add tokens or mint new NFTs to the contract. I can remove everyone off of it update the permissions, and then pay for the gas to execute that. So in permissions, you can control the minter and creator. And that does it for your ERC-721 NFT collections. Let's come back to contracts here and let's deploy ourselves another contract. So we're going to hit, come back to the contracts tab. We're going to hit deploy contract, go back to the NFT section here. And the next one we're going to go over is the NFT drop. So I'm going to select this one here. And the NFT drop, you can see the use cases. This is going to be for your PFP collections. Maybe what you're normally used to when you see NFTs out there. Uh, maybe you want to release artwork um, and, you know, allow people to claim and pay a certain price uh, to claim those NFTs. So what we're going to do is just we're going to hit deploy. Now we're going to fill out the contract parameters, similar to like how we did with the NFT collection contract. Uh, I'm just going to call this one NFT uh, drop. And then we can give it a symbol here. We'll just say NFT drop here. And you can add an image description. You can fill out the royalties and primary sales. Again, just like how we went over in the NFT collection, 
You can come down here, select the network or chain you want to deploy to, select the drop down, select that chain, and then deploy now. Confirm that transaction. You get another pop up here for a signature request, again, to add it to your dashboard so you can sign that. And once your contract has been successfully deployed, you'll be brought to your contract dashboard. Similar to like the NFT collection, you'll have your contract uh, checklist here. This one's a bit longer. And the reason for that is because we have to set a claim condition. And that is, again, that functionality that you get in an NFT drop or any type of contract that has the drop extension. Um, it just has a claimable extension that allows users to claim the NFTs. So we'll come here to the left hand navigation. We'll come to the NFTs tab first. And what we'll have to do is lazy mint NFTs to the contract. So lazy mint is not minting to create the, the token, but we're pre, you think of lazy mint as like a pre-mint. We're prepping the NFT to be created so that when someone claims an NFT, we have the metadata and we know what NFT that person is going to be receiving. So you can single upload and single upload is just like how we did with our NFT collection. You can create all of the NFTs and metadata all within this and you can provide it a name, the media file, description, properties, attributes. Uh, but if you're doing something like a PFP collection or a larger collection, normally you'll generate those pieces of metadata. So what you can do as well is do a batch upload. You have example CSV and JSON files here, so you can download those and you can upload all 100, all 500, all 10,000 of the pieces of metadata that you want in your NFT collection. You can just drop those files in here and then you'll be able to lazy mint them to your contract. On the left hand side here, you'll see a few different things. Um, so what I'm going to do actually is let's just uh, lazy mint one NFT here. Let me just add in our blob friend here and lazy mint this to our contract so we can you know see an example of everything we're going to go through here so let me just confirm this transaction right here all right so very similar to how we created our nft uh, collection contract or the non-drop version of our erc721 contract and once we lazy mint this nft here so you'll see that that was a lazy mint not a mint like the uh, nft collection contract so we have our token id we have our media type the name similar to like how we had before but the owner the owner is no one the owner is null right now this nft hasn't been fully created and sent to a wallet address in our previous ERC721 contract, when we created and minted the NFT, it was automatically put into our wallet and created for us. This one again is a lazy mint or kind of like a pre-mint where we're prepping the metadata of the NFT for when someone does actually claim it. So I have one NFT in here. Uh, we'll come down here to the claim conditions and the claim conditions, this is the features uh, that you get with the drop functionality. Now there are different conditions that you can set up and we'll quickly go through them. So only owner and you can hover over the information icon here for a little snippet about what it is. Only owner means that only the owner or the deployer of the contract has the ability to claim the NFT. Example of this is you have a maybe a collection of a 10,000 PFP project that you want to uh, launch and you want to claim a certain set amount for maybe distribution or for your team members, uh, you can set the first claim phase to only owner. You can deploy the contract, get everything set. Only you as the owner will be able to claim maybe the first 25 NFTs or 100 NFTs, and then you can set it to the following claim phases. Um, and those claim phases, the next one will be a, like an allow list. So this is where you can have a list of wallet addresses and only those wallet addresses will be able to claim. So if you want to, again, create a list uh, through whatever means um, to collect those wallet addresses. You can provide it with the wallet addresses and only those wallet addresses will be able to claim. Uh, we're going to skip up to the public one and then we'll come back to this public with allow list. But the public, uh, this is going to apply to all wallets. So public means it's open to the public. Uh, you can set prices, you can set uh, claim limits, uh, but anyone will be able to claim within this phase. Then there's a public with allow list. This is still a public claim phase, but you can override certain things with an allow list. So let's just say in the public uh, with allow list, the public price is 10 Matic, right? Let's just use that as an example. Uh, but maybe if there is a list of wallets in our allow list that can purchase the NFTs for 5 Matic. So the allow list will overwrite the public parameters that we input 
for the public with allow list. So those are the four different claim conditions. Uh, once you select one, I'll just select a public one for an example. You put in the name of the phase, when it's gonna start. Uh, so you can set up multiple claim phases and then it'll just roll into the next one depending on the start time and date. You can put how many NFTs will be in this phase. So maybe with the allow list one, it's an allow list, but it's for the first 100 people. You can just say 100 NFTs here. You put in a price and you can also put in how many NFTs per wallet uh, can be claimed. So once you set everything up, you just hit save phase. You'll get a transaction that appears. You just have to confirm and pay for the gas. There you go. And now we have a claim condition set. So again, this is what the, the drop functionality allows you to do. Um, again, you set up all your NFTs here. You can upload all your NFTs, set the claim conditions. Now there is one extra tab here uh, that you see that we didn't have on the previous NFT collection smart contract, and that's the embed button. And the embed button allows you to get uh, create your own embed, which it'll give you a preview down here. And you can then plug this embed into your own website, um, wherever you want to put it. You can customize it right over here. So you can add gasless if you want to do open Zeppelin relayer or economy relayer. You can select your theme. So we can say dark. You can see the preview down here or we can set the primary color. Let's just say blue to match our little blue blob friend. And you can just copy this iframe right over here. Plug it into wherever you want. Again, this is going to give you uh, a full embed so you can see here we have only one nft uh zero has been minted uh, but we have to connect our wallet so we can like connect a metamask wallet here once we're connected you can see we can mint one nft uh, it's free because we didn't put a price in here so let's just claim this and you get a transaction here you can see we're going to claim the token id zero uh, we'll confirm that pay the gas and once we claim the nft you'll see one out of one here so again, you can take this embed, plug it into wherever you want to, and you can you know, launch your NFT collection as easy as that. There you go. You can see we successfully minted and now it is sold out because again, we only had one NFT, uh, but there you go. We can close that and there you have it. Uh, again, you can copy and paste this embed wherever you want to. And that does it and covers the NFT drop. Now we're going to go over one last ERC721 contract. I'm going to open up the contracts tab again and we're gonna to go to deploy contract. And the final one that we're gonna go over is this open edition ERC721. So what is an open edition ERC721? An open edition ERC721 is similar to like the NFT drop smart contract, but instead of you know creating different NFTs for each of the tokens, all the tokens are going to share the same metadata. So you set one singular metadata and every token minted is going to share that metadata. So this is great for things like maybe like a concert ticket or maybe you want to launch uh, something that uh, NFT and all the NFTs are going to look the same and have the same attributes. Um, and But maybe you don't want an ERC, something like an ERC-1155. Uh, you still want an ERC-721, but you want to share that metadata instead of you having to, you know, duplicate the same metadata over and over and batch upload it. You can just set that metadata once um, and then all the tokens minted will always share that same metadata. We'll go over an example of this. We'll deploy this smart contract. Uh, we'll just call this our open NFT. And we'll just say open again, setting up your contract parameters, selecting your chain and everything. Uh, I'm going to hit deploy now. now. You're going to see there's one extra step here, and that's called setting your NFT metadata. So we're going to have to confirm through two transactions here. So there you go. Um, another transaction. This is for setting the metadata. We're going to hit confirm. And then we'll get that last pop up, which is a signature request to add the contract to our dashboard. There you go. So a signature request. We'll sign that. It has been successfully deployed. We brought to our open edition ERC721 smart contract. And you can see here, NFT metadata is set. It's preset um, with a blank metadata. So we still have to set that up. And then we need to set up our claim condition. So we're going to come over to the NFTs tab and you'll see a button here that we haven't seen previously in the other smart contracts. And that's the set NFT metadata. So if we set the metadata here, this metadata that we set up here, again, is going to be for all tokens claimed. So we can just make our little blob friend again here. You can add all your descriptions, whatever you want to set the metadata as. You can create that here. You only need to set it once. So we set the metadata here and then we're going to confirm. 
And then once we have that set, again, every NFT that gets minted to this smart contract is going to share that metadata. So over here, we have a claim condition. We can set the same type of claim conditions like we went over with the NFT drop contract. So you have the same four here. I'm just going to set up a public one and not charge any thing. Uh, we're going to save that. And this is just, again, so we can test out this claiming and I can show you what I mean by every NFT is going to share the same metadata. So once that is saved, we can come down to the embed section here just to test out our NFT claims. Um, but right here, you're going to see this come up. And what we're going to see here is our open edition NFT. So I don't think we set an image, so it's not going to show anything here, uh, but we can mint an NFT here. So let me just mint one and then we'll mint a few more after that. You can see here, we're going to mint an NFT here. Once we mint the NFT, we'll take a look at it in the NFTs tab. There you go. NFT has been transferred to our wallet. So if we go up to the NFTs tab here, we should see our NFT here. So it says NFT one, it has our little blob friend here and it has the owner, which is my wallet. Now, again, we only set that NFT up when we set the NFT metadata. Now let's come to the embed here one more time and let's claim, oh, let's set this load. Let's claim three more. So I'm gonna mint these three. And again, what should happen here is uh, you can see all the three NFTs that I'm going to be minting. All these NFTs that get minted, again, will share the same exact metadata that the first NFT that we minted had. So every single NFT in this collection is going to have the same attributes. It's going to have the same metadata, but they are going to be ERC-721 tokens. Instead of me having to, you know, create 10,000 of the same metadatas and, you know, upload 10,000 of those metadatas, I can just set one metadata and every token references the same piece of metadata. So once this finishes claiming here, there we go. Let's head back to our NFTs tab here and we'll just see three more NFTs here. Again, all of the NFTs are the same. They have the same metadata, same image. Uh, we didn't put a description or anything here. Uh, and then you have uh, the owner, which is all owned by me, but everything will share the same piece of metadata. That way you don't need to recreate the same piece if that was the goal of you know your collection. So there you have it. We went over a few different things in this video. We covered what an ERC-721 standard is, uh, which is essentially an NFT or a non-fungible token. We also went over some of the different smart contracts or ERC-721 smart contracts that you can deploy through ThirdWeb. Um, and we actually deployed these smart contracts themselves. Uh, this included the NFT collection smart contract, which is your ERC-721 contract your NFT drop contract, which is your claimable ERC-721 smart contract, again, with that claim condition functionality. And then we had the open edition ERC-721 smart contract, which all NFTs will essentially share the same metadata, making it easy if that is, you know, the type of collection you're looking to create. But I hope you folks enjoyed this video. If you did, give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on videos like this. If you need any help or support, we'll drop a link down in the description. You can open up a support ticket and our support team will be happy to help you out and answer any of your questions. But again, I hope you folks enjoyed this video. Until next time, see ya.